You know, we haven't talked about the kids in a while, the royal kids, the royal cousins, royal circles. So why don't we do that? This is what this video will be about. It'll be about the royal cousins, the ones coming up. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So I'm just wondering, you know, these new cousins, this next generation, the kids of Harry and Meghan and William and Kate, are they all going to get along? What's a little, bit, a little peek into the future life of these uh, uh, kids? So let's take a look at that and um, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Well, like I say, it seems like this might be uh, interesting and just a little diversion. So I'm going to use this Crow Tarot. No particular reason. One of the other readers that I look at uh, was using it recently, Marianne from Revealing Like Tarot, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, she's the one uh, who introduced me to this deck indirectly. Just she was using it quite a while ago, and I noticed it and liked it, so I ran out and ordered it. And, uh, and so that's why I happen to have these cards, the Crow Tarot. But to get back to the... Uh, question at hand. So these royal cousins, George um, in particular, because he will be the next king, um, presumably. Um, Archie, now it looks like he's going to use that title or, or have access to it. Prince Archie. Uh, Lilibet, Princess Lilibet. She was just christened uh, as of the filming of this video uh, in California. Uh, and using that uh, moniker, Princess Lilibet. And I guess now that uh, her grandfather is, uh, one of her grandfathers, I should say, is uh, King of England, uh, she certainly um, is entitled to uh, use that, um, although um, he, sh he could um, remove those, um, those titles. So, but less focus on the adults and more focus on the kids. So George, uh, Archie, Lilibet, the cousins. I'm just wondering, do they interact? Do they know each other? Will they know each other? But before we do any of that, let's have just a moment of meditation. Okay, so Prince George, is he going to become king? Cards that fall out of the deck are a page of swords, swords of truth, justice, rules, and law, and the page is the very weakest of the royal court, so this is a weak offering of truth, justice, rules, and law. Then we have the two of wands, which are short-term uh, plans, and then in the beginning here we have the eight of wands, which are lots of obstacles. You know, I, do, I think this is just my clumsiness. I don't feel like these cards have any meaning, but you've seen them. And if you feel as if they do, you can let me know in the comments. But George, let's start with him. The most um, prominent. He knows, um, <coughs> at his age, he has an inkling of what's going on. You know, at that age, I knew what was happening in my family. So I have to say, I feel like George, um, is aware, okay, uh, that there's something. So I want to know, um, is George aware of the um, turmoil around his um, aunt and uncle and cousins and his parents? Let's have three cards for that. I've got a tickle in my throat and I can tell I'm going to cough, but I'm going to try to <coughs> try to get through it. And I may cut these coughs out. So three cards. One, two, three. 
George. Is he aware of this turmoil? First card up is the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups is actually a hopeful card. This is the emotional uh, well-being, uh, almost generational or um, familial um, emotion. Uh, and I have to think my first read on cards is typically in a, in a positive way. So Nine of Cups, emotional, generational. That's what we start with, does George know of the turmoil? Well, then we have the Eight of Cups. Now the Eight of Cups is typically having to walk away from something of emotional importance. And the last card, does George know, Prince George know, is the King of Cups. He will be the king one day, presumably, and uh, that's the king of compassion. You know what this says to me? Is it says to me that his future in this regard may be colored by the situation that's going on now. Remember, he is aware. He is aware of what's happening. And uh, if his parents or the, his aunt and uncle are um, doing Zoom calls and there's some sort of a, um, a forced uh, pleasantness about that, he'll detect it. So anyway, so we have the Nine of Cups, and he'll, he'll know what his parents are talking about after those calls. The Nine of Cups is familial uh, emotions, okay? Generational emotions too, which means that so whatever he's uh, learning now or feeling now can carry on. Uh, then we have the uh, Eight of Cups, which is having to turn away from some sort of emotional um, situation and go on forward. And then, but then we end up with the King of Cups, whom he will be, and I wonder if these emotional situations won't color his uh, ideas or his feelings in adulthood when he might be king. So I think he is aware, and I think it'll stick with him. Let's talk about um, Archie. So Archie, he is still young enough to... His only world, really, uh, is his parents. And um, it seems like there's probably not much... Uh, actual monarch uh, influence into his life. So Archie, um, what can the cards and three cards tell us about Archie's oh, awareness of this uh, turmoil? One, two, and three. And remember, if you're interested in these cards, I'll be talking about them more uh, towards the end of the video. So uh, Archie, what does he know? What's he? What's what can the cards tell us in three cards about him and this? Well, the world card, his whole world, and look at the crown in this world card. That's very interesting, actually. And the world card, you know, this is the end of the cycle. This is the end of something and the beginning of something new. So the first card up, and I'm going to have to say this will have to be in the center in this read because it's the world card. Again, I tend to read these cards in a positive uh, manner unless something uh, you know in the cards leads me to do otherwise. So the world card says, yeah, the royal family is in his world. It is in his world. He is aware. He knows something of it at his very young, innocent age. And uh, this will be the beginning and the end and the, and the new um, uh, process that's in his little mind. Okay, this royalness uh, will have some influence in there. The next card, wow, is the Wheel of Fortune. And so this is telling us that uh, this is still undetermined, kind of. Okay, how this is going to affect uh, his future is still a little up in the air. And then the last card for this is the Empress. The Empress is telling us uh, is the nurturing, the uh, graceful card, really. And it also uh, has to do with secrets. Um, so I'm going to say that uh, all of this is going to be um, is is going to be colored in in some sort of a positive way in his future. And um, I would guess now this isn't in the cards, but I would guess that his his royalness isn't going to be a major factor uh, in his upbringing or life. That's me just telling how I feel uh, having looked at these cards. So yeah, so for Archie, does he understand what's going on? Well, it's in his world. The royalness is there. Look at this lion just peeking out from the corner. Look at the secrets. Look at the strength and look at the intuition. So yeah, so it's it's there. It will always be in almost in the background of his uh, of what happens in his life. And it's uh, right now, it's at the point where it's just still kind of undecided exactly what kind of role that's going to play. But in the end, 
And just like there will be a generous, nurturing uh, aspect of this for him at to some point. Okay, so all good for um, George and Archie. Now, a little bit. This child has no idea what's going on. And, um, uh, you know, she is not, um, these things are not part of what she's um, taking in right now. Uh, she's taking in love and um, security and uh, that's it. Um, and whatever uh, is influencing her now is genetic, okay? So whatever, uh, there's a part of us, I feel, that is always with us from the very beginning and that will start to show itself as she develops more personality. But let's see, how is this uh, going to affect uh, Lilibet's future? In three cards, just a little hint. Two, three. I don't think she's going to have the complicated decisions or situations in her young life that perhaps uh, Harry and uh, and William had. First card for a little bit is the fool, and it's exactly right. This is not to say she's a fool, but she's just at the beginning of her journey. She's just starting out. She knows nothing. Okay, this represents a little bit. This is who she is right now. She's just starting her little journey, so of course she knows nothing. All right. The next card for her is the eight of swords and the eight of swords is a feeling of being trapped okay um it's kind of appropriate truth justice rules and law she's surrounded she's guarded this uh raven crow or raven if you want to call it is really guarded at this point and really can't see that there's any danger uh, out there and then the last card for a little bit is um is the seven of swords and that's having something to kind of fend off uh, any other actions. Um, oh wait, the Seven of Swords. No, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I was thinking of the Seven of Wands. The Seven of Swords is theft and betrayal. And this is in the future position, really. So there may be some feeling of theft and betrayal in her future. So I wonder if at the point to where she really starts to understand what her history is, if she doesn't begin to feel as if something had been taken from her. We won't know. I'll never know, of course. I won't be around when she's old enough for this to develop. But that's kind of what it says to me. She's at the beginning of her journey. She's in a protected, kind of can't really see any dangers that are around her. And uh, But perhaps in the future, she may have some feeling of theft and betrayal of perhaps her birthright. We'll see what happens. Now, the, the more uh, pressing question that I really wanted to get at is these cousins, how will their futures play out for them personally between each other you know will they be friends uh, will they understand this stuff that's going on will they be in each other's lives uh, will I don't know just whatever the cards can tell us in that regard about these um, these three the two of Harry and and the most significant of William's kids right now George so six cards dyadic cross and we'll see if it if it calls for four more to make it a Celtic cross and remember, uh, if you'd like to know more about these cards, this Crow Tarot, which is really beautiful and fascinating, I'll talk about it at the end of the video. And if you haven't subscribed, it certainly would be a help if you could subscribe. Uh, it makes all the difference to all of us YouTubers. It means uh, that we get noticed uh, to other people or not, and then uh, helps us to keep, uh, helps me, what us, helps me to keep making these videos. Okay, so first card up for the Royal cousins royal circles is what i called the video so what's going to happen in these new royal circles well the signifier card is this ten of wands and the ten of wands is a hard load to carry a difficult heavy uh, load to carry but this crow is doing it so royal circles these cousins there will be a, a, a tough road ahead the uh, challenge to that is the hanged man, which is Major Arcana, and it's looking at things from another direction. And it's notable that this crow is looking back, back into the past. So the challenge to this difficult journey uh, that may be ahead of them is uh, getting a, a, a fair look, a decent look back at the past and understanding what you're looking at from this upside down position that they will have been raised in, really. Um, the basis of this whole thing with this nine of coins is the privilege that they'll all enjoy. 
you know, these kids of Harry's are already wealthy kids. They're going to be wealthy kids. He's amassed enough wealth, even at this very moment, to be generational wealth, I believe. And, uh, and of course, uh, George is in the same position. So the basis is all of this is their very privileged uh, outlook on life. The past of this ah, is the broken heart. Of course, the past would be the broken heart. This is swords, truth, justice, rules, and law. And the broken heart is all the hurt feelings, all the angst that's happening right now in the past, which right now will be their past when all of this uh, becomes evident to them. Just like um, the past of the parents, uh, Charles and Diana, is so evident to William and Harry now. In the sky of this reading is the Seven of Swords, and it comes back from one of those earlier uh, reads that I just, pulls that I just did. And again, that's theft and betrayal, and that's in the sky of this. So the thing that has to be aimed at, understood, uh, focused on, is this theft and betrayal aspect of their lives or at least their parents' lives. So that's what will need to be understood in the future. Okay. And then the final outcome for the static cross, royal circles, the cousins, um, is king of wands, king of action. This has to be the monarchy. Um, I want to say this has to be George, that perhaps with a compassionate heart that was shown to us in that previous three-draw draw pool, the king of cups, he will develop some sort of a plan um, that brings... Uh, all of these that brings these cousins back into the fold or keeps them there if they if they're not gone out by that time so that's a beautiful read so read it again and say the royal circles the cousins what can the cards tell us well it tells us that their future in this regard anyway is going to be a, a load to carry and it's going to be challenged by how they look back over what happened right now uh, at that time in the future. And the basis of this all is that they will all be privileged individuals in different ways. The um, uh, past that will be their past in the future is what's happening right now, this heartbreak, the truth, justice, rules, and law that is the heartbreak of what's happening now. And in the sky of this, the, the thing that has to be focused on at that time is the theft and betrayal uh, regarding that truth, justice, rules, and law that seems to be, have, be uh, becoming a part of their history. And then the um, likely outcome, though, goes right back to George at the time uh, that he's king is um, uh, with the compassion that he has gained, apparently, um, he will have a plan and look at sprouting a beautiful, lovely rose and with lots of strength and uh, eternal uh, infinity and sunshine. So this is uh, really a beautiful card to finish with, and that's what we will do. We'll finish on this. It's up to George to make sure that that generation is somehow part of the next generation, I believe. I did feel a little bit like I was intruding. Uh, these are just children, but you know, it's a peak, and who, who knows uh, how accurate this stuff is? I don't know. Uh, tell me what you think. Tell me what your interpretation of the cards is, and let me know what you want to read, and I'll read on that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice, sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, Hmm. She's spending time with her daughter, River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to don't know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought is going into the cards. 
the, the cards themselves are just really amazing and I love using these cards a lot they've got a sort of a an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards I mean it's not really a patina because it's fake but you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use and they're beautiful cards and you know what the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often at least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards and uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is the Crow Tarot. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.